for coming. Thank you for coming. You know, I don't do this. I mean, I don't do this. I don't do this. So, you know, back in the 70s, I, I came to a point where I decided, okay, do I want to spend the rest of my life on a bus singing the same song night after night after night after night? After night? Yeah. Or do I want to um, find something else to do? So I found something else to do. But so consequently, the, the musical um, uh, environment or whatever you want to call it, in Eastern Ontario kind of frowns on me because I, I supposedly turned my back on my blossoming music career, but really... What the hell? I know! <laughs> that not make sense to me either! And uh, so consequently I got to watch my kids grow up. I didn't have to live in a bus with a bunch of drugged out hippies. Smoking dope and doing God knows what else. And meeting all kinds of wonderful ladies. So um, anyway, uh, that's why I don't do this. But And that's why when I do do this, it's still kind of fun because uh, the songs I have not been singing every freaking night for the last... 35 years? Can you imagine going, these eyes, these eyes, what you walk away? We, we don't have that in our set. I know. I just thought, just, uh, uh oh. We're not doing that one. Okay. So anyway, that's that's why I'm really glad to be here, honestly. So anyway, um... Oh, no, 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 yeah, 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 No, no, that, yeah, 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 yeah. You make me funny when you do that. I am really delighted to be uh, next to uh, my old lead guitarist, Terry Whitford, because uh, um, I love this guy so much. He's, uh, he's really means, he means so much to me, and it's, it's great to have him there. And uh, he's, he's got to leave real soon, so we, we, we moved him up to the front of the set, and we re really screwed things up, but that's okay. So anyway, first of all, let's get going. Uh, here's a song that was a big hit for a guy named Roy Head. One hit wonder. Take whatever you want from that. <laughs> this was his big hit. I hope you recognize it and I hope you like it. Whenever you're ready. You tempo us.
for another another song. I am glad we didn't rehearse this year. You bet. You <laughs> this is way better. You know, uh, I'm probably the background singer's worst nightmare because I can never. I got all those verses in the wrong order. I've been singing with Ward for a long time. And oh, no problem. Oh, thank God for that. Well, anyway, that was Treat Her Right. <laughs> but, uh, okay, that was our version of Treat Her Right. Sort of. The Dove yeah. Dove song. Thank you for sticking around for that. Okay, here's another one that Terry knows. Right? And the other one that Terry knows. Oh look, and there's the words. Excuse we'll me. help out here. God. They're probably the wrong words, so it'll be okay too. So they're very, very small. Anyway, oh, hang on. Oh, you can make it bigger. If it was only that easy, eh? Uh, <laughs> what price vanity? <laughs> All right, here's a song again. One hit wonders. These guys were from Portland, Oregon, were they? Were they Portland or Spokane or Seattle? Seattle. Northwestern United States of America. And, um, well, they anyway, one is legal now. What? Yeah. What? One hit, and this was it. And we're going to do our best because the words are there. I, don't have to, I may not have to dub a dub through this one. <laughs> this is a new eye, new eye. All right.
Bye, buddy. Thanks, man. <laughs> or, or get him a hearing aid faster. I don't which it was. He's got something in his ear. <laughs> I don't know if I need the words to this one, but you, might, you guys might need the words. All right, now we're going to go back to the front of the set. This is what we were going to originally start with. And whatever. Hang on, I think I got a beer burp. Pointed it, pointed it, Bernard. <laughs> No, I guess not. Oh, it could be something else. Oh, point oh, sorry, it in <laughs> sorry, I'm being quite vulgar and rude. Uh, anyway. Um, okay. Long time ago when the earth was green, there were more freaking animals than you've ever seen. No, no. Um, I, I uh, had, the, had the good fortune of, uh, of leaving Calgary at the ripe age of 20 years old and I went to England and, and to make my fortune because apparently I wasn't making much of a fortune here. I was in the radio business, wasn't I? So anyway, I went to England and uh, I bummed around England for a while and I managed to uh, tell a story to some guy who believed me and I got a, I got a job on a, a what they called a pirate radio ship. It was a boat anchored in the uh, North Sea and we played rock and roll music 24-7. And it was really popular and um, uh, I uh, was... Uh, a boss job is, it's a, and Anyway, um, and the reason I uh, sort of uh, uh, was able to pull it off was thanks to a guy over in the corner over there. Uh, he was, he's my mentor and, and a good friend and uh, it, without Whoopi Don Wood, I probably wouldn't have uh, been able to... Uh, I have been able to PS my way on the... You can hear me at the back. I, I would love to. Hang on. You can do that. How's that? Ross has the turn up ability. Wow. I, I, I'll try not to feed back and I'll talk a little louder. How's that? How's that? He's not real impressed, but that's okay. So, oh, that's better. Thank you, sir. Um, so anyway, uh, I worked on this pirate radio ship when I played rock and roll, and, and because of this pirate radio thing, there was the British invasion. So you remember the Dave Clark Five, you remember the Rolling Stones, you remember Jerry and the Pacemakers, the Swingin' Blue Jeans, Wayne Fontana and the Mindfenders, yada, yada, yada. Without the British pirate... Oh, sorry. <laughs> pirate. <laughs> pirate radio. There never would have been the British invasion because that was where the music was being played to the British Mathis. Mathis. <laughs> Alexander Keats is a mighty fine group. Them that likes it, likes it a lot. <laughs> a lot in there too. So anyway, this is one of the songs I heard when I was there. And it was originally... Uh, Yes, you want to leave the room? It's right over there. No, no. What radio station? Radio Caroline South. She's from there. She wasn't old enough to be. No way, man. This was 1966, 1967. You do remember. You were in your mother's arms listening to the radio. Yes, you were. So anyway, um, that was... Uh, uh, so I heard this song. And it was originally the B-side of Mighty Quinn the Eskimo by Man for Man. You know, come on. Yeah. You know, you've not seen nothing like the Mighty Quinn. Anyway, it was a B-side. Let's do that one instead. What the hell? No, no. Anyway, I heard this song. I had a chance to record it a little later. And scary as scary could be. It was a hit record. And I hope you like our version. And it's going to be our version. Oh, uh, daytime, nighttime.
front row, I'm sorry I'm salivating. I didn't see his new teeth. That's why we put Jim beside you. We thought that was because of the diva here. Ah, sure. So it is, isn't it? I don't know. Okay. So that was in the key of C. That was daytime, nighttime. Um, I was going to tell you another stupid story. Another stupid story. Oh, okay. I'll tell you another stupid story. Um, yeah, back in, uh, oh, I don't even remember when it was, it was 2000, maybe it was 2000. Um, Ronnie King over there from the Stan Peters and I, we, uh, we were asked to uh, go to Ottawa and do a, a medley of 70s hits. And it was in front of the, uh, the Parliament buildings, and they had this big, huge stage set up outside. And we were just supposed to go up and do like a, a verse of our song, and then the next guy. So there was there was the Stampeders, uh, the Lighthouse, um, Foot and Cold Water, myself, uh, Ian Thomas. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. Crowbar. Excuse me. There's, there's that beer for again. Anyway, um, so anyway, we, we go to Ottawa and we rehearse this thing, and uh, so we're kind of kept behind scenes and things, and then finally it's time for us to go out and do this this thing, and we rehearse it, so we're cool with it. So just about before we're to go on stage, they, we say, uh, so um, how many people do you figure are out there? Oh, I don't know. What do you mean? Anybody, any, anybody got any? 110,000 people were standing up there. Whoa. Whoa. The largest crowd I ever performed live to was the Stampede Corral when, when Terry and I and the boys opened for Roy Orbison. Now, I don't know how many people the Stampede Corral used to hold, but there weren't no 110,000 people. Needless to say, I think it's on you. I think the cut is on YouTube. It sucks the big one because I was so scared. Ah, oh, my knees were like this. Anywho, that's another stupid story. Anyway, here's a song that um, when I was working on this pirate radio ship, we used to get all these new records coming out every week, and everybody would grab them and listen to them in the library and say, "Oh shit, I like that one the best. That's gonna be my. That's gonna be my sure shot this week." That's my pick to pick. So everybody was always clamoring for all these new songs, you see. Well, this one song came on board, and everybody listened to it, and we went, holy shit, is that ever good? That is, wow, what a great, do you think anybody's going to like it besides us? Uh, it's really different, it's really weird, but wow, it's so good. So anyway, one of the guys said, I don't give a damn, he says, I'm going to make it a hit. Well, I don't know that he made it a hit. I mean, the song was a great song. This is A Whiter Shade of Pale.
Last year you said you didn't even have shorts on, so this is better. Every year is better. <laughs> so anyway, um, thanks for coming up. You were terrific. Yeah. Who are you? You sound just like Bob Seger. You think you believe me? No. I didn't believe me either. Anyway, no, he was great. So um, another stupid story. Uh, so there I am. I'm. Uh, I'm a 20-year-old kid. I've managed to BS my way onto this boat in the middle of nowhere, and uh, I'm about to become a disc jockey. I mean, okay, I did the all-night show on CFCN on the weekends, and I maybe did it for three, four, five, maybe six months tops. I was originally hired as a cameraman, but Hugh Dunn over there will attest to the fact that I didn't know the front from the back of the camera. <laughs> I couldn't focus, I couldn't chuck, I couldn't dolly, I couldn't squat. But I was kind of cute, so they kept me around. So anyway, um, there I am, I'm on this boat, and the, the equipment was the most antiquated equipment you can imagine, the, this radio station. And um, so I was scared spitless because I didn't know how I was going to make this thing work. So I spent the whole time before I go on the air, Watching the guys playing with their knobs and turntables and think, oh dear, I didn't know how I did it. Okay. Uh, doing their radio shows. So I'm sitting behind them watching them do their shows and I'm trying to figure out what the hell they're doing, you see. Meanwhile, they're on the air and they're talking it up because I'm the new kid, you see. So it's, right then, we've got a great show tonight. We've got a great show this afternoon. I hope you really like it. Got a new fellow starting in more afternoon. His name's Keith Archer. He's going to be on at 3 o'clock. Don't forget to be here. Listen to him tomorrow tonight. He's a great guy. He's right. Say hello, Keith. Uh, yeah, Keith's going to be here. So everyone, make sure you listen tomorrow afternoon because I'm getting more and more nervous and wound up and stuff. So finally he comes. Three o'clock the next afternoon. I'm ready. This is it. Do or die. I bullshitted my way this far. I gotta pull it off, you see. So all the guys come up and they say, oh, you're gonna be right, mate. Don't worry about a thing. Yeah, you got it made. You know, it's gonna be good. They're gonna love you. Dude. And then the guy that hires me, he puts his arm around me and he says, Keith, he says, there's eight million people out there and they're gonna love you. Eight million people. They say they've never heard anybody talk so fast in their entire life. Those that caught my first radio show. It is, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's another stupid story. Eight million people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was the population of Canada at the time. <laughs> anyway, um, what's next on the list? Oh, Jesus. Okay, this one ain't gonna be easy. I wonder if I need my beer. Yes. <laughs> Everybody buy Keith a beer. <laughs> oh, oh. I'll be right back. It's over here. Please talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> here we go. Okay. <laughs> You know, I've never been able to figure out whether or not this stuff makes your voice better or makes it worse. We'll soon find out. If you guys are all drinking, it does make his voice sound better. I you. That's the way it works with us anyways. That's right. The more you drink, the better I sound. Okay. Here's a song that was... Um, uh, I love singing this song because the girls all love to sing along to it. The guys, they like to break, you know kissy face pressy body to this song. <laughs> this is uh, the Righteous Brothers version, or not. I can't really do that. Yes. I'm not Bobby Hatfield. I'm Little Keith Hampshire from Calgary, Alberta. I'm going to sing the Righteous Brothers song, Unchained Melody. Yes. We think.
nice. Oh, very nice. That, that right. beard does right. make you sound better. That was very nice. Yeah. I don't think it's going to help me in this one, though. Okay, we all need a beer for this next one, actually. All right, now, the little stupid little story about this one is, this song was a big hit in England for a guy named Zoot Money's Big Old Man. One hit wonder. And uh, I recorded it, and um, the record company really thought that this was going to be the big one. This was going to just blow the doors off of everything. It's going to be bigger than Sweet City Woman. Yeah. Yeah. Don't that oh, oh, it's too late. Oh, I see. Okay. Anyway, it wasn't bigger than Sweet City Woman. <laughs> anyway, we can the problem with this song is that it's really confusing, and I I can never remember the words. Can we make them bigger? You, can, you sure? No, don't make them too big. Don't make them too big. Uh, is that okay? Can you, you got enough there? All right, because I'm sorry, but I can't remember the words to my own damn song. This is Big Time Operator. Dope. We didn't do dope. 
We get Heineken. <laughs> we get a hell of a buzz for that. Still can't look at a green bottle. <laughs> anyway, here's another song that I heard when I was in England, recorded by one of the girls that was in the iCats. She toured with Ike and Tina Turner. She did a solo uh, thing. The sun's in your eyes, and I'm really sorry. I wish I could hold my hand up and help you with that. But You're the brightest people in here, you two. I can help you. That. Can I have a little spotlight on that couple over there? Thank you very much. So anyway, um, this is another one of the songs I heard in England by this girl named P.P. Arnold. It was a big hit in England, and I re-recorded re it. It was the name of my album that a gentleman kind of, I think it was Eddie, showed me today. He was, he's got one of the five copies that were actually sold. That doesn't, that doesn't have a little hole in the corner. Anyway, this is, uh, uh, this is the first cut is the deepest. Anybody that was here last year or saw this 
conglomeration happened last year. Mayor, I don't know if I told it or not, but uh, it was good. You know, he likes the story, so I'm going to tell it again. Well, anyway, Rod Stewart recorded First Cut is the Deepest a couple of years after I did. And uh, so it had already come and gone in Canada, and everybody knew it that was going to know it. Anyway, Rod Stewart comes to Toronto, and he's playing this big concert at the CME Grandstand, you see. And he says, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, no, hang on, i got to get my Rod Stewart way. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a new song out, I hope you like it. Um, and uh, anyway, it goes something like this. And he proceeds to sing the first cut as the deepest, you see. Well, the whole audience starts singing along with Rod Stewart. The first cut is the deepest. And he said, I'm going, God, do I do who the hell who know my song? <laughs> oh, he says, what a great group, you know? So anyway, he's singing the song, and he gets to the chorus where it comes, for when it comes to being loved, she's first, when it comes to being loved, she's cursed, uh, but when it comes to loving me, she's the worst, right? There's three lines in the end part. I don't know what you call that, three lines. Anyway, for some reason, Rod Stewart drops the third line. He always sings two lines. And same with Cheryl Crow when she redid it. She always sings, and a lot of people only sing two. It, to me, it doesn't make sense, but it doesn't matter. The, the thing is that when Rod Stewart was singing this to all these people, and everybody was singing along, they sang the third line. My agent told me that. <laughs> but it's such a good story, I, I love to tell it. Okay, what's next on? Oh, okay, time to pick up the pace a little bit. Anybody asleep yet? Yeah, I want to hear your Joe Cocker voice now. Want to hear my Joe Cocker? <laughs> song originally recorded by the great Ray Charles. I had a chance of, when I was a kid I saw him at the Jubilee Auditorium. Whoa, what a, that was, up until then that was the best show I'd ever seen in my entire life. And this is one of the songs he did and it blowed me away. But we ain't doing the Ray Charles version. We're hardly doing the Joe Cocker version. We're doing my version. God knows what that's going to end up sounding like. Anyway, and I'm going to screw the words to this one up too. This is Unchain My Heart. Can you do that again? That gives me the wheels.
walking out the street, my girl, with another guy. His arms around the light of you and me. See how I put the band in this? Could have been you, but oh no. You get to make the noise. This is our version of At This Moment.
Joe Cocker. <laughs> you are so beautiful. Me. He gets to see my best time. So this next song is actually a really fast drumming song, and our drummer's got a sore arm, and I said, you want this one full speed? He said, yeah, if we can speed it up, that'd be pretty great, but it's quick, so. Okay. It's the last one, folks. This is not what you call your, your home waltz. <laughs>
so early, so I don't have to talk so much over the band. And maybe then I'll have a little more left over when I'm done. Anyway, thank you again very, very much for coming. Keep after everybody.